Good evening. Uh, today I'm going to detail um, a disaster that happened in New York on May 10th, 1897. It happened on board the Leona. Now, um, this ship did not um, go down. It went down, but you can still see the wreckage in the harbor when the water is low to this day. It killed, I believe, 13 people and started by what they think is spontaneous combustion in the cargo hold. Now, this is um, the, you know, the firsthand experiences um, of the people that were on board that day. Now, it's dated May 10th, and many relatives and friends on the passengers aboard the Mallory Line steel steamship Leona was towed into port late last night with several bodies of people that have been burned to death or suffocated by smoke while flames are raging in the hold of the steamship early yesterday morning. They visited the ship at Berlin Slip today to learn further details about the fatalities. The body of the dead were removed to the morgue at 7 o'clock and the inquest will be delayed for a week in order for the authorities to check out and, and investigate the accident. Captain Wilder of the vessel did survive and is put under arrest by the coroner and paroled into Mr. Mallory's custody. The list of passengers that sailed on that unfortunate vessel from this port for, for Galveston on Saturday was um, as follows. William O'Brien, A. Grandy, R. H. Compton, J. W. Cranford, wife and four children, S. B. Winslow, Mrs. Winslow, Mrs. A. Fear, F. B. Woodruff, H. A. Everest, Bridget Sullivan, S. Hill Cossett, Mrs. S. Crotrain, Maria Madro, Louis Rosenberg, Thomas Doyle, A. Arbsell, A. White, Richard Hanley, Mrs. C. Guzza, her daughter, Patrick Coleman, Joseph Solomon, and wife, J. Vlasiak, and family, Samuel Train, Charles Pug, and Sophia Shomaz and August Krenz. Henry Everett, an Englishman, was on his way to Texas, and Charles Poo of Trenton, who was bound for Denver, were in the men's compartment above the place where the fire broke out at uh, about 2.45 o'clock yesterday morning. Several of the steerage par uh, passengers, they said, including one of the Italians, was also in the room. Who was first awakened and blinded by the smoke. He aroused the others, and with them they started to leave the room. As they opened the door, they were blinded the, by the smoke, which had a very dense sense and kind of a yellowish color. Realizing the danger to the others aboard, he cried fire and endeavored to arouse the women in the steerage compartment. Finding that they could no longer remain below, the men got together their valuables as quick as they could, a couple of pieces of clothing, and went to the uh, deck above. To do this was was by going um, going along the hallway, which was in total darkness, and c after catching a woman who was crying out for help, they reached the stairway and managed to climb above. When they arrived on deck, it was just a lot of confusion. Officers running around wildly, others were shouting, and nothing had been done as yet to even start to extinguish the flames. That was before the flames had reached the steerage compartment, however, though the smoke there was, by that time was suffocating. F.B. Woodruff, a cabin passenger, also told today his experience when he uh, the vessel caught on fire. After supper Saturday night, he visited the captain's quarters, remaining there until about midnight. He then went to his own room nearby. After sleeping about two hours, he was awakened by shouts on the deck that there was a fire. 
He rose up hastily, looked out, and tr- endeavored to turn on the electric light in his room, but it would not work. So he put on some clothing and left the stateroom, finding the hallways filled with smoke. Other passengers by this time had been aroused, and all were clamoring to get up onto the deck, where they brought as many of their belongings as they could to get together in such short a time. By this time, the officers seen that the conditions were serious, ordered the lifeboats to get into readiness. Whistles were being blown and everything done to attract the attention of passing crafts. Some fishing vessels, which were nearby, came alongside and remained until the hailing distance for some time. But they were not needed, as the city of Augusta, passing just then, took off um, the pa- Leona's passengers and both crews did what they could for all aboard. It is believed that it was spontaneous combustion that was responsible for the fire. At the company's office today, it was stated that the vessel carried in the neighborhood of 100,000 different packages of merchandise. It also said that several boxes of matches as cargo were aboard and was denied positively by Mr. Mallory, who maintained that the cargo was not of an inflammable nature and that nothing unusual had been shipped. But the opinion seems to be general that the flames were started in a quantity of um, cotton and were commuted to other cargo so rapidly as to make it impossible to extinguish the fire any sooner. The loss of the cargo has not been yet ascertained, but the vessel is not damaged as badly as might be supposed. The interior of the merchandise compartment is burned out, but the hull is not much injured. Those dead reported today are steerage passengers, are Katia, Mrs. Gaza, Miss Gaza, Maria Madro, Sophia Chalmers, Mrs. Hannah Solomon, um, Bridget Sullivan, Mrs. I. Vasilic, two children identified ship's company, H. Hartman, age 27, New York, and Butcher, Alfred Howey, age 40, a steward, and Alfred Lang, age 19, uh, a New York uh, steward. Now, um, there was a lot of problems that, during that time with fires on many steamships, and this is just an example, but this happened um, on a sunny day in, you know, good weather, and 13 people lost their lives.